Hello you guys, welcome to The Ranting Shop. I am Melissa. Today we're going to be discussing Love and Marriage Huntsville, Season 2, Episode 15. And we're going to start, let's get it. So Leticia, Marceau, and Kimmy, Maurice, and Destiny, they're basically, I think, still at the event from last episode, Destiny's event. And they're discussing like everything that happened with the podcast and with Wanda's disruption and with... Kimmy apparently being rude and Letitia being upset about that. And Marceau feels like, well, Wanda was rude because she caused drama. You were disrespectful to Wanda when you told her, oh, I see Tisha and Marceau invited you. But in my opinion, I don't think Kimmy was being rude. I feel as if she was just calling something out how she saw it at that moment. And she said, because she knew the reason why she said that, and made emphasis about who invited Wanda is because she knew she didn't invite Wanda. So I think it was more a jab at the people who invited her as opposed to Wanda herself, right? But they took it as rudeness to Wanda, but I feel like she was being direct towards the people that invited Wanda, who is Letitia, her mother, and maybe Marceau, I'm not sure. Um, I, I'm loving the fact that Kimmy is standing 10 toes deep she doesn't care. She she believes what she believes. She thinks what happened was wrong. She doesn't think she was rude. I don't think she was rude. And nobody can convince Kimmy otherwise. And um, I love that about Kimmy. Uh, Letitia walks off because she's again saying, but Wanda is family and you're supposed to invite family to events. And she made a point of saying, well, what if it was my children? Would you sanction them? And then Kimmy was like, maybe it depended on it depends on the event. And that's a good answer to that question. The point of the matter is, which Letitia is not getting, is that despite the fact that we're family, if I chose not to invite someone specifically, it's not your place to go ahead and invite them. I feel like that's what Tisha is missing. She's not understanding that. It's not your place to invite somebody I purposely chose not to invite. But she walks off. Um, and I just wanted to make one note. We saw that this is or was a costume party. However, it looked like Marceau was wearing his working clothes. I don't think that was necessarily an outfit. Marceau, it was a costume party. Where is your costume? He came there wearing his working clothes. Anyways, so that was that. Um, Kimmy was not budging. She felt like Wanda was rude. She felt like Wanda was not invited. And she felt like Wanda shouldn't or didn't have to be there. And she didn't understand why Wanda was there. So there's that. Melody, the recording artist. So we see Melody in the studio working on her song um, inspired by her current life, current situation with Martel. And her brother visits her in the studio and discusses what happened at Destiny's party when Martel got angry and wanted to beat is his name Marvin. Wanted to beat Marvin up or Marcus. I think it's Marcus. Wanted to beat Marcus up. So Melody's like, what? Why did he want to beat you up? And Marcus is like, well, because I told him, basically I was trying to let him know that what he's, or how what he's doing is affecting the kids. And Melody's like, well, I mean, he just refuses to, I guess, acknowledge his actions in all of this. And um, it becomes about everybody else. So Melody said that during her marriage with Martel, you know, she always says that the marriage was good. They didn't have any issues. But now she's noticing that there are certain things he did that was narcissistic, right? After the fact. And that's mostly always the case like when you're in a relationship with someone a lot of things that they do you don't see or don't acknowledge as such people often tell you oh he's doing this he's doing that that's not cool and you tend to ignore it however when you see it for yourself or or when you're willing to acknowledge it for yourself it's a different story and it's normally when it's too late that you acknowledge it because as people say love is blind in my opinion it's not that love is blind it's that love makes you ignore certain things that you would not normally ignore and you ignoring those things it's because you want things to work because you love that person but as soon as that love gets compromised or the love becomes uh, trivial or whatever it is 
then you start to realize or then you start to not ignore these signs that you will always see him but it's not like they were not there it's not like they magically appeared right it's just that you choose to ignore them but anyways marso and wanda have a discussion marso is basically telling wanda why kimi has essentially sanctioned her from the events and kimi keeps saying that she did not say wanda was sanctioned it was marceau that said it that is true marceau said it but kimi basically kind of implied that she doesn't want wanda to come to events anymore so that's technically a sanction but she didn't use those words right so he's breaking it down to wanda and telling wanda you know why she is gonna potentially be banned from coming to certain events and Wanda doesn't think she did anything wrong. Wanda feels like she didn't know when she would get to see Melody again. And she had something on her heart to let to tell Melody. And she felt like that was the perfect time to let Melody know what she wanted Melody to know. It just happened to be at Jalen's event and it just happened to go left. But she doesn't apologize for it. And Marcel feels like, Kimmy, oh sorry, Wanda is missing the point. It's not what she said, but it's how she approaches things and does things. It's, she doesn't have any type of self-control. She doesn't have any tact. She doesn't have any grace or graciousness. The way she goes about things is very brash and disruptive. And so Marcel is telling her that's the problem. And she doesn't see anything wrong with what she did. She, doesn't, she thinks Kimmy is rude, but I think Kimmy is just direct. And she is just sticking to her perspective she's not seeing that she did anything wrong and then marceau is bringing up the fact that well kimi greeted you badly initially but at the end of the day marceau the way kimi greeted miss wanda had nothing to do with miss wanda being in an altercation with martel that wasn't kimi's fault and it wasn't created because of Kimmy's greeting. It was Wanda's doing. It was Martel's doing. Wanda felt the need to go over and speak to Melody, right? Insert herself in a situation that has nothing to do with her because she said it was on her heart to tell Melody something. Martel was the one that really created the whole debacle because he's the one that came and confronted Miss Wanda, which caused, you know, the scene and everything. So... The greeting had nothing to do with it. So I don't understand why Marcel keeps bringing up greet the greeting and how Kimmy greeted thing. These are completely different issues. The greeting is one thing. I don't feel like Wanda even cared per se about that greeting. It was more so like what happened after the greeting, but it wasn't caused by the greeting. But anyways, let's move along. Um, Miss Wanda says, what is a sanction? What is a sanction? That was hilarious. Miss Wanda, a sanction. She's like, what does that mean? Well, basically, you're being banned from events, Miss Wanda. People don't want you around these special situations, you know? Mm. And Wanda says that she doesn't like Marcel. Oh, one of the reasons she doesn't like Marcel is how he speaks to Letitia. And it's true. Wanda, uh, sorry, Martel talks down to his wife. Everybody sees it except for him because he just refuses to acknowledge the fact. But he definitely talks down to her and treats her like a kid. For sure. And then when Miss Wonder goes off because she's getting angry or she's whatever the case is, he's like, look at you thicker than a snicker <laughs> in those, um, was it leopard tights or whatever she was wearing. That was kind of like inappropriate, Marcia. So like, really? Anyway, let's move on to the camping trip. They're, they're prepping for the camping trip. It's Kimmy. It's Mar Maurice. It's Marceau. It's Martel. I just feel like Kimmy acts like their parents. Even her husband, she acts like she's his parent. She's basically saying she accompanied them so that they wouldn't spend, like, all the money on dumb stuff, basically. And that's very parent-like to me. Uh, Martel apologizes for Wonder debacle to Kimmy, of course. Um, he's trying to deflect, all right, about how their business ended up being exposed. He's, of course, blaming Melody. But I just highly doubt that it, had, it was Melody that exposed it first. But he keeps thinking it was her and keeps blaming her for it. Um, at the end of the day, even though Melody vented on social media, he also vented on social media. He went to Dr. Heavenly and exposed all his wife's business, talking about she cheated and talking about the fact that, you know, she wasn't pleasing him sexually, even before the show continued. He blasted her on Dr. Evany's podcast. So I'm not understanding why he's still blaming his wife. Martel, I'm sick of you. I'm really sick of you. Stop this. 
Stop this. And I was using this analogy to explain how ridiculous Martel is every time he says Melody cheated. You go to a store, right, with your friend. Your friend decides to rob the store, right? You then go ahead and rob the store because your friend robbed the store. The police captures you. The police tells you, why did you rob the store? And then you proceed to tell the police, well, my friend robbed the store first. My point is, would that absolve your robbing the store? No, you would still end up in jail. Separate from what your friend did. You would still end up in jail for what you did or what you chose to do. You can't blame your friend and say, oh, my friend influenced me to rob. But he robbed the bank first. I robbed it after. Doesn't matter. You did what you did. And you have to face the consequences of that. So every time he prefaces something by saying, oh, Melody cheated, it's like, and it has little to do with your actions. It has nothing to do with what you did. You know, it's like isolated issues. He keeps bringing them together thinking, okay, that would soften everything. It would soften the blue, but it doesn't. We look at it like, Okay, you keep saying Melody cheated and we don't care about that. What you have to say for what you did. All right. So they discuss Marcus and what he said. All right. And Kimmy is remaining completely neutral in the situation. Kimmy is like, well, I mean, that's crazy. That's thing. You know, <laughs> Kimmy is being completely neutral as <clears throat> Marceau is telling, Martel is telling her all these things. So they discuss Mars. Well, Kimmy, before that, Kimmy is like, you know, well, that's crazy and, you know, that's wrong or whatever. She's not giving any kind of, how do I say, a rope for Martel to feel like Kimmy's on his side. So Martel comes along and says, well, he thought Kimmy was his friend. And I noticed that's something he does. Like, if he tells you anything that's been going on and you don't side with him, he, he questions the friendship. Like, you're supposed to be blindly loyal to me after I tell you this stuff. No. Again, you see, it's kind of like how Letitia is. I give you my point of view. So you're supposed to be on my side automatically. That's not how things work with adults, Martel. It may be how it works with children, but it's not how it works with adults. Adults are able to be neutral and be able to assess situations on both sides and come to their own conclusions. You giving your one side of a situation should not make an adult automatically follow your lead and follow everything you say. That's maturity, Martel. It's nothing to do with friendship and loyalty, but everything to do with being a mature adult that's able to assess things from both sides and draw their own conclusions, not based on what you say or what another person says, but what they can assess from both situations. That's just adults matter. Anyways, Marceau and Maurice discussed the 47 acres. Um, Marceau is going about it cautiously because he's been burnt by Martel before, and so he doesn't want to fall into that trap again. But... We're going to see what happens next episode as far as that 47 acre situation is concerned. Anyways, the camping trip takes place. Um, it's Martel, Cedric, and Maurice. So, Cedric is always there, ready to counsel these people. Like you'd swear, Cedric has some type of degree in therapy or psychology because the way he speaks, it's like he's, he, he tries to get you to open up by relaying or divulging his own experiences. That's what he did too. Martel telling him about, you know, he ex also experienced the divorce at a young age and Mar Mar Martel could relate because he's going through a similar situation. Um, we learned that Marceau, his car got wrecked on the way to the camp, so he was not able to join them. And, you know, because Maurice was so expressive, you know, um, after seeing the video of the wreck, Martel was making popcorn. And I guess because of Maurice's energy or reaction to what he saw on the phone martel dropped the popcorn or whatever anyways he blamed marceau for his popcorn situation not working out again always blaming people for things he did at the end of the day marceau had nothing to do with your popcorn you as a result of your own actions through the popcorn it had nothing to do with martel marceau but that's his nature to always blame external parties for what he does wrong but anyways, they talk about the marriage. See, Derek is asking him, can it be reconciled? He's saying no. At this point, it definitely cannot be reconciled. You, you put, you've put all their business on blast. The same way you say Melody has put you guys' business on blast, you've also put you guys' business on blast. Right? And they come to learn why the marriage cannot be reconciled. It's because Martel has a baby on the way. So even if they were... Okay, I could see your point. Okay, I could understand. After he mentions the fact that he gets this woman, this woman that's not his wife, pregnant, they all had nothing to say after that. Nothing. 
you know see Derek was like oh well I could understand if you really want you know sex from your wife and she's not giving it to you it's gonna be really hard because you know that's the only person you could have sex with but then you, you notice none of these men are understanding that it's because she's tired so their logic is if it's not a physical disability or some issues that you're having then there's no excuse that's how they think apparently but when you're tired you're tired and instead of Martel trying to understand why his wife was tired and was unable to perform for him sexually, he decides the solution is, let me go outside and look for what I want outside of the marriage while still trying to maintain my marriage. That's the logic he used. And it worked for a while. I guess it was smooth sailing for about two years before Melody found out, right? But after she found out, everything just went downhill from there. So he thought he was saving his marriage, fulfilling his own needs separately from his wife while also being the best husband he could be but what he didn't realize that when you cheat in relationships you always get found out and he got found out and everything went to shite okay when C. Derek asked him is there anything you could change the man says nothing nothing at all it's the narcissism right and then he talks about well the infidelity you think right and then that's when he told them that you know he potentially could have gotten a girl pregnant and so on. He blames male for not providing the sexual needs that he required and um, mentions that male cheated as a preface for him getting the girl pregnant. Martel, Martel, Mr. Martel, you getting the side woman pregnant is your own fault. Melody has nothing to do with that, right? You decided that you wanted to go and entertain other women outside of your marriage. You made that decision. It was you. Melody didn't say, oh, Martel, you could go look for other women because I can't fulfill you. She didn't say that. You made that decision. So you stick with that decision you made and you go down with that boat that you sank. Don't try and, and drown Melody too. You sink on your own. And Melody also, Maurice says something important. It's not necessarily only the infidelity and all these things. It's your approach to it that's making things even worse. First, you're denying it. Then, you're blaming other people for it. No. The, the correct approach is for you to acknowledge it, apologize for it, and stop attaching it to what other people do and what other people have done. It's not making sense it's not wise and what you're doing is you're making it more difficult for the people around you when you keep deflecting and acting like it's not you it's them anyways so he thinks it's his kid because the timeline of everything it makes sense everything something went bad within his marriage he ran to the side woman bad talked his wife to the side woman did the unthinkable with the side woman, slept with her without any condoms, raw, slept with his wife without any condoms, so he could have potentially been passing around diseases that none of them, they may have been aware of, but they didn't seem to really care at that point, because remember, Melody got pregnant, even after she knew that Martel was cheating, she still had a baby, which means she had sex with him without a condom, the, after that, we learned the side woman got pregnant as well, having sex with him without condom. So these people are just mixing bodily fluids. And it's when you think about it, it's really scary and that they put themselves in that type of situation. But I feel like at some point, to be honest with you, it became about a competition between these two women. I feel like at some point, Melody felt like even though she's the wife, when she decided to stay within that marriage after knowing that Martel cheated, she lowered herself. To the same level as the side woman in my opinion because it became about a competition okay who can get who can get pregnant from him who can have a baby from him you know so melody got pregnant first and the side woman saw it as competition oh so now we're competing to see who, who martel wants the most okay so now i'm gonna get pregnant so she got pregnant too so at some point it became an unhealthy competition between these two women right and at that point you should be out before that happens you should already leave you should already be gone unless you want to stay and keep competing with the side woman 
you should be gone like a lot of people like to say oh the wife got pregnant it's the wife's right to get pregnant but at that point in time it wasn't the best time for melody to have gotten pregnant she shouldn't even have been sleeping with her husband raw considering he had this woman for how many years sleeping with her unprotected many alleged abortions from that situation i mean it's just common sense for you to not interfere with him raw when you know that he was cheating raw but anyways let's move on so melody goes to the pumpkin patch with the kids right so they're going they're doing the pumpkin thing and normally they would do it as a family but at that point you know it's just her and the kids so they go over to the pumpkin patch they have some fun but then miss Ima comes along it's melody's friend from remember when they melody was acting was doing the acting thing she met miss Ima. so miss Ima came and you know speak to the kids about everything what they're going through and how they're handling everything and she explains that she got divorced as well and so her son doesn't stay with her, her son stays with her father and um the boss baby she's so smart she 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 caught on quick so when miss Ima was like well i'm divorced and the kid so miss uh, boss baby is like oh like like my mother and father you know they're also going through a divorce and um the children of course they want their parents to be back together Marcel jr is seeing how the divorce is affecting melody and how melody some he sees his mother cry sometimes and he sees his mother upset sometimes and of course that affects the children and when melody he mentions a situation that i remember because melody came on live that time and mentioned the fact that Martel made it difficult for her to just go to the um home to get her clothes you know and Martel jr brings it up and says well well, he probably was there as well. He mentions Melody when she came to get her clothes. And her his father was acting like a crazy person. You know? And that's like, it's sad. It's very sad that these children are being exposed to a situation like this. And who knows how it's going to affect them in the future. And she posted something on her Instagram after the fact. Melody did. Mentioning about, you know, how divorce affects children. And so on. I'm going to insert it here. So you could see what she said. And it's just very sad. As much as you try to shield your children from negative things. And you know the harshness of the world. At some point it's like you cannot protect them anymore. Like you almost have to say to yourself. Yes it's sad that I'm breaking up this. Or this marriage is coming to an end. But it has to be done for the mental well-being of both partners. And the children will be sad. But they'll understand that. The parents are better off not being together, you know? And it's extremely sad, you know, to realize that your failed marriage, you know, has a negative effect on the children. But it's better than staying in a toxic relationship for the children's sake. Much, much better. Um, anyways, that's basically what happened for Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 2, Episode 15. We saw how the marriage or the divorce is affected the children and it's so sad and i noticed that um the oldest daughter wasn't saying anything and melody was like i will need to spend extra time with her to make sure that she's coping well because let me tell you a marriage a divorce sorry disrupts the children they, it disrupts their what they're used to and it, it kind of shakes them up a bit so it's a very difficult situation for them to be in and i just wish them all the best but anyways that's it for my review let me know what you guys think about this episode um anything that you want to add anything that i didn't mention that you feel like is worthy of mentioning please send me a message in my in the comment section and uh, see you next time for love and marriage Huntsville. remember to like and subscribe and see you next time on the ranting shop bye bye